Welcome back to the show. Let's continue with our discussion with today's guest, Evan Sanchez, co-founder of Authentic City Partners. Evan, we were talking about the 800-pound gorilla mm -hmm. out there on Tennessee Avenue, Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall. Great spot to be. Talk to us a little bit about that, how that was the center, but not at all. Well, yeah. I mean, I think you need, again, a staple, and you need scale. You know, so the Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall, the, the vision of that was always to be um, – a place that people could gather inside and outside. Right. And that's one of the other things that we really wanted to take advantage of is outdoor space in the city of Atlantic City. You're on an island, you're on a beach block, you should be outside uh, as much as you can in our, in our opinion. So that outdoor space is really essential for what they do at the beer hall. Obviously, uh, Chef Charles is an incredible chef and he just opened up Chucktown the other day or yeah. the last couple months. And you know, just they, they, they build a, a basic, and I mean that in a very positive way, staple concept that's very approachable and that you can kind of grab onto. And again, brand it, lean into Tennessee Avenue. Don't run away from it. Tennessee Avenue Beer Hall, right. this is what we do. This is where we're at, right. come visit. Love it, and I love the, the, the phrase you use, lean into it. And I'm jumping forward a little bit. One of the things that I always um, wondered about and, and thought of, and of course there was nothing there at the time, was getting the folks off the boardwalk into now, sure. which is the loop. I mean, was that part of the thought process as well? I mean, and we'll jump back into this, but it, it was. So we talked about it as a reverse pier. You know, you think about the beach blocks mm -hmm. and you think about the boulevard that's the boardwalk and there's piers out into the ocean, but the beach blocks are basically piers off of that. Yeah. And so, you know, there's there, people have been trained really not to leave the boardwalk. Um, and you have to draw them off that, and you have to draw them with good concepts. And so we always knew that. And obviously, the Irish pub has been able to do that. The pick have been able to do that, but they're right at the mouth of the boardwalk. So how do you get the people to move a little bit farther? Right. Um, that was a question, and I think we, we believed it was possible with good, concept, good concepts that were concentrated together. Right, and one of the concepts, the orange loop. It becomes a thing. It becomes a thing. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so the, the, the vision grows, right? So initially it was just a Tennessee Avenue transformation. We believed it could become a bigger thing, you know, a scalable model, and that was always the hope, and that the downtown loop, you know, you kind of just keep biting one block off at a time. So the orange loop really came to life when Bure opened, and that's Pat Fasano's concept. Right. Um, and, you know, Pat's a really talented developer. He's a, he's a great guy. He's also he's, very talented. He's been on the show, yeah, so I love he, the guy. He's yeah. got no energy. Oh, yeah, no energy. He's a low energy guy. Um, and, you know, he'd done it in Asbury Park, and yeah. he saw kind of what we were trying to do on Tennessee Avenue, and he was like, you know what? Like, in addition to buying some real estate right near where Stockton came into Atlantic, he said, you know what? I'm going to come in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys how this is done. And, and uh, you know, he opened up Array, bought a lot of real property there. And, you know, the loop became a thing as Pat came into the picture, and you were able to expand beyond Tennessee Avenue, take on to New York Avenue, and then those three beach blocks, Tennessee, St. James, James, and New York, the Orange Properties and Monopoly became what we now call the Orange Loop. Right. And then you had some new uh, additions to it. Some closed, some new. You know, Anchor Rock Club. Talk about some of those new additions as well. And listen, Pat, you know I love you. Just joking. He's one of my favorite people in the whole world. The guy is full of energy. Because... Yeah. He's, again, I don't even say what his age is, but if, he, if, I have half, yeah. if I have half the energy he has at That's his right. age, I'll be, I'll be a happy guy. So, um, you know, diversification is really important. Right. This was never about a couple of people. This was always about a bigger vision. And you, to fill that vision, you need a lot of different people doing a lot of different things. And so, you know, the folks at Anchor Rock um, are, are just amazing at what they do. It's an incredible live music venue, so needed in the city of Atlantic City. They did a beautiful restoration of the old Deja Vu uh, with a really talented developer partner there, John Longacre, and then his team, Adam and Greg, just great people. Great people. You know, and, and they... They're bringing in all kinds of acts. They're, they're, they have a diverse set of people. They're working with a lot of local folks. I love to see some of the stuff that they do you know, with people that are right here in Atlantic City. They'll bring acts from all over the place, but they'll also just feature people that are in Atlantic City and the surrounding area. And so you know, New York Avenue started to build out a little bit more um, you know, different concepts there. You have uh, uh, the first medical and then recreational dispensary, MPX. Um, is in the Bywater building right on New York Avenue next to Heyday. Um, you have uh, a young entrepreneur, for uh, Tiff Wilkinson, at, at Side Pony, a print shop. I mean, you want to see a thriving neighborhood. Food and beverage, um, music, entertainment is a part of that, but there's got to be more to it. And you got to have housing there. you got to have all the different elements of a city, and we're trying to compress them into one little area. Right, and when you talked about the... 
uh, the Anchor Rock Club. I just remember back in the day, deja vu, running around as a 20-year-old, 30-year-old, in and out, and that just being closed. And like, wow, this was a place where so many gathered, and now it's happening again. And to their credit, and to your credit as well, Evan, and, and the crew, you know, we'll just touch on it for maybe a minute or so. COVID happens, sure. and it just like paused everything, and you continued, the group continued, we're going to go forward with this. It had to be a trying time financially, emotionally, physically. I mean, talk about that a little bit, the persistence. Sure. I think that, again, these are black swan events. COVID was mm -hmm. one of them where you cannot predict it and you don't know what the impact is going to be or the duration of that impact. And so when it happened and, you know, everything had to be closed in, in March, April 2020 and, you know, you just don't know what it means, right? You just know that, like, wow, this is not good. Yeah. <laughs> we knew it wasn't Atlantic City only, right? right? And so I think sometimes there's things that hit Atlantic City that are really, really negative or, or, or can be really harmful. This hit everybody. Right. And so I think there was a sense of, like, there's a shared concern, not just for Atlantic City, uh, but it was a tr very trying time. We were in the midst of reopening Heyday at the time, which we did open at the end of 2020. Again, when it was still very much the pandemic was pretty serious and it was a tough time to open a business, but there's, there was always a grit in this project. There was always mm -hmm. a note. We know what we're getting into, even if we don't know kind of thing, where this ain't gonna be easy. Right. Um, and COVID was just another opportunity to, I think, um, just, sh just show that grit, show the commitment to our city, show the commitment to the project. Um, and to all the people that are involved in it, all the partners, all the you know other owners, all the stakeholders in general. And I saw that approach. I saw that that commitment um, is one of the things that I did during that time as well. And a few of my friends, they're like, "Listen, you know, this is going on. It's going on all over the world." Yeah. Keep going forward, Mike. Hit the gas pedal. And people encourage that, Wayne. And that's what you guys did. When I say you guys, the whole crew, I would go out there and see, you know, it was continuing. It was still talked about. These things were happening. And it gives people, you know, gave me inspiration to continue sharing, talking to people, doing the radio show, doing the TV show. Listen, we do have something special there. Uh, that 48 blocks are incredible. And like I said, a large part of it's for you and your crew. One of the things I always thought it was uh, amazing to me, and I wasn't into that field, was the arts. Yeah. We talked about arterias a little bit. I'm jumping forward a little bit. But talk to us about the importance you have, but art, painting, Heather, those sort of folks that have transformed buildings and what we got going on in the city right now. Yeah, you can't talk about the Orange Loop without talking about the arts yeah. and the impact of the arts in Atlantic City and you know it, it, how generative the arts are, how powerful they are mm -hmm. in, in creative process and inspiration. And you know, we, we were talking before, you know, the first Arteriors, which is an event where you take over a vacant space, the Atlantic City Arts Foundation takes over a vacant space, they put in artists, they transform that space for the short term. That's the plan. Right. It's then to be converted into a, you know, something else. Um, there's been 10 of those Arteriors over the last eight years. Five of them have been in the Orange Loop. And I think that is speaks to you know a desire for the arts to drive a lot of the change that's happening. We know that you know the murals matter. You know you see them and you're like, wow, that's beautiful or that's interesting or that's whatever, and it makes you feel something and you want to be attracted to that. It's gravity. Live music is important. You know the guys at Anchor. These things matter for the livelihood of the city, for the livelihood of the Orange Loop. And so the the story of the Loop and the story of the arts are kind of like blended into one. And a lot of artists live in the Loop. And so that's the other thing, like it's great for it to be a destination for people to come to. It's really important people that it's really important that people live there too. That's right. Really important that people live in the loop and the city of Atlantic City and more people bring more people, which brings more people. And a lot of the early people that have moved into the loop are artists themselves. Um, and they're creatives and they're creating art in the loop and they're showing their their friends and that's again. That's how it works. That's happened in other places as well, like Asbury Park and everything. And that's been really, really positive for the city. And you know, I, I was just talking to Kate uh, from the Arts Foundation, the executive director. There's 103 murals that have been put up over the last eight years through the Arts Foundation. 103. 103. That's crazy. That's crazy. That is crazy. But you feel it. it it's a place to be. And again, uh, for our listening and, and viewing audience, uh, Evan, describe, define arterias just a little. Because I get questions all the time yeah. about it. Yeah, so arteriors, um, the, the gist of it is there is a vacant space that's in transition, so it's, it's yet to be developed. You go in, you bring in many artists. I think the last one at the James on the boardwalk, which is the old saltwater taffy, has 
15, 20 artists. They, they create in different spaces. Um, they do these like art installations. They can be sculpture, they can be uh, mural, they can be you know, all the different formats. And, and then you just basically open that up to the public for free. You know, so awesome. people can come and, and actually this, you know, this one, it, it, we had over 350 people show up to the opening night. And again, that speaks to the energy that the loop is generating, the energy that the arts are bringing, and the positivity. And that's something about you, Mike, is it, it, positivity is super powerful. Positivity mm -hmm. is generative. That creates momentum in a positive direction, and it just keeps building and building and building. And that's been essential for whatever we've been able to accomplish to date in the Orange Loop. And again, I appreciate you saying that, though, but but that's what it's about. Again, a restorative narrative. Something's broke. Let's figure out how we can fix it. And how do we tell our story? How do we really tell right. a unique Atlantic City story that's diverse, mm -hmm. that's nuanced, that's rich, not just one thing, one thing, one thing. That, that doesn't work, and it hasn't worked, and it's not going to work. Not going to work. So, again, on the, uh, at the, the loop, you know, we got Cardinal. I mean, we got so much we could yeah. jump on. Sure. We don't have a whole lot of time, but talk to us a little bit about that and any large-scale projects that are probably going to come in some time in the near future. Sure. So, you know, Cardinal um, opened in May of, of this year, of 2023, and, you know, that's a partnership with Chef Michael Brennan to really, again, just keep upping the game. You know, just it's always about just improving, constant improvement, and there's gonna be some natural turnover that happens within concepts, within neighborhoods, and I think uh, Cardinal, again, it just keeps moving us on that curve of just keep getting better, keep getting better, keep getting better. There's some, again, we always follow a uh, crawl, walk, run model, so there's now going to be some larger scale development that's happening. You know, Pat Fasano has a, a, a brand new building that's opening on St. James. It's beautiful, residential, uh, you know, eight two bedroom apartments that are gorgeous. We're in the midst of finishing up a project on Tennessee Avenue with two bedroom, two bathroom apartments. So there's more housing coming. We're uh, working on townhomes on uh, what now is Schultz Hill Boulevard, uh, Westminster. Uh, the, the James itself will be developed into yep. apartments and food and beverage on the boardwalk. Um, there's going to be eventually some large-scale development on New York Avenue in those parking lots. Now, down the line. But there's a yeah. vision for what comes. Right. Some of that's already in progress, and some of that will come down, down the pipeline. But more people, Mike. That's what's coming. Right more people living the loop, that's what's coming over the next you know, 12, 24 months. And couldn't ask for anything more than that. And we have about a minute, and I'm gonna put you on the spot here. What happens at the loop can happen anywhere in Atlantic City. Talk to us about that a little bit, that maybe somebody can take a few blocks down, the road. and it, it's happening, but maybe not on that scale yet. I think that's exactly right, and the hope was that it could be inspiring to other people. Like, the goal was not like, oh, this is how the loop, and it's, it's hoarded, it's our thing. It's like, hey, you start, you work collaboratively, you create some new businesses, you bring in good housing, like, and good begets good. So we love to see you know, people developing, we love to see more housing, we love to right. see new concepts. Um, there's so much room to grow in the city of Atlantic City, and we hope that the loop is an inspiration for years to come. Listen, and it's gonna be, and I really believe what you're doing is inspirational to people, not just here in Atlantic City, the folks that come into town, because one of the things I see on Tennessee Avenue that I thought I would never see and I don't say never quite uh, often, was that's that interacting and people popping in and out, going to the different venues and spots, whether it's a leadership studio or the street over to or the DOG, so to speak. So Evan Sanchez, I wanna thank you for coming out. We have to continue this. We may have you back in the spring as well as on the radio show. Brother, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for coming back in 2015 because it's been a, a huge success and a lot of work. Folks, thanks again to Evan Sanchez, Authentic City Partners, for taking the time to be our guest today. We'll be right back after this. Make sure you stay right where you're at.